Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our second rest day interview with Harry Tanfield of AG2R Mondial. How are you feeling, Harry, after that savage stage that you had yesterday, the Angleru? And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a rude introduction to that mythical climb. Yeah, not too bad. Um, didn't wake up particularly damaged this morning. Felt better. Um, the muscle near my knee, the VM, which has been causing me a lot of issues the last two days, that felt a little bit better this morning. So, um, yeah, I just had breakfast and then fiddled about with my TT bike, went on my TT bike for uh, 45 minutes and I had no pain. So that's good. Um, what was your strategy for the climb? Just ride up it with Bennett and Mark off, <laughs> just chill. <laughs> <laughs> when you, I was just literally just on the radio, just asking when they were finishing, like all the time, because as soon as you know when they finish, then you know that you've got like you know forty six minutes or whatever. So from that point of crossing the line, then I knew that how long I could ride for in the you know in the um, in the day. Did you have to get huh? off at any point? Because it's so steep. Like they have that like final three kilometers. They call it the goat path or something silly. Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. I think it well, maybe used to be concrete, but it's all tarmac now. It's good, though. Like, but it's tarmac, but it's a horrendous climb. Um, yeah, I got off with two k's to go to just jump for a pee. Um, thought, I had a bit of, thought I had quite a bit of time. It's like, you look at your clock and you're like, oh, yeah, I've got 20 minutes to spare. And we're at, like, 2.2 k's to go, but <laughs> it takes a long time to get up that. 2.2 k's when it's average like 20 percent or something i know that you tackled um two category three climbs first and then two cat one climbs and then yeah. the angleroo just to loosen the legs off um yeah although i was going easiest up that last one it felt like it probably felt one of the hard no it didn't the second climb of the day was actually probably the hardest we had a 15 minute climb to start at five percent and then we had a oh we had an eight minute climb five percent and then we had a 15 minute climb at five percent and then we had a 20 minute climb at nine percent and then a 20 minute climb at eight percent and then the angler which is an hour and ten at like i don't know 12 or 13 average or something but like the the main bulk of it is like 40 minutes at like 15 percent or something stupid like that horrendous how are you kind of recovered um on this rest day like what kind of things do you pros do um on a grand tour rest um, day i say i would i would say that i would just eat on a rest day and just chill but um yeah i weighed myself this morning and i put two kilo on in like two weeks so <laughs> so i didn't eat so much um but other than that i've just you know i've set on my tt bike i've been fiddling with the bloody tt bike with like the gears and but then obviously you get all the course information today about like where you can change the bike, setting the bike up, like, and like the, the bike change isn't in an optimal position. So like trying to work out all that stuff. Um, and then around that, I've been to see the osteo to sort my, um, I haven't seen, I should have seen him the night after the crash when I crashed um, like four days ago or something like that. Um, it was the day that I was up there in the sprint like earlier in the week. And um, yeah, I did a bit of damage to like my shoulder and twisted my tibia, like into, into my knee and my hip. It was all a bit out of place. And that could have been the reason for the last two days why, and obviously my saddle was a bit bent as well for the rest of the ride when I crashed. Um, that might be why that my, you know, my muscle on my legs hurting, um, or it has been, but. So I went to see the osteo, had a massage, had a bath, just being like, just trying to recoup as best as possible. Just, just chilling. Uh, once I've been, to, I've been, been begging teams, been trying to sort out a um, <laughs> for a tub, not for a ride, um, for for a tub for the for the front, for front wheel, um, because the teams only we only brought um, we only brought like four wheels with good tubs on, and the five spokes didn't have good tubs on, so. I went and bartered with Kaja Karahal team for a tubular. So I got a tubular off them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then obviously other than that, my package arrived with my new chain ring that arrived at lunchtime. So I went out and, and got that put on the bike and stuff this afternoon. And obviously like trying to get the mechanics to set up a 60 tooth chain ring and like a, you know, big cassette in the back and 
no front make. It's like mind blowing, but trying to just get them to do the best they can with what they've got. Looking at tomorrow's stage, that is well, you're you're a very strong TT rider. You nearly took the British time trial title uh, off Garen Thomas a few years ago. It's thirty three point seven kilometers, basically flat, kind of, well, kind of flat, and then it's you get that. Yeah, and then you have that final, is it two two K climb? Yeah, one point eight at fourteen average, I think, or fifteen average or something like that. So are you definitely gonna be doing a bike swap at that point? Yeah, yeah. I mean the first like I say the first hundred meters are for free, but so you've actually got one point seven K. Um but it depends if I where it is a bike swap. I think the designated bike swap is actually like before the climb, which doesn't make sense to slam your brakes on 50k an hour to change a bike um but i don't know exactly yet so if not i'll just have to have a mechanical on the first corner and throw my chain up have you guys practiced uh bike swaps or because uh, you saw it at the world championships in norway a few years ago some people really yeah. bottled it yeah that's the thing it's like if you've already got a bike there waiting are you better off stopping and braking from 50k an hour and getting your bike and starting off again or you better just going in and climb as fast as you can until you just come to a stop on the first corner and then change the bike but then obviously you're taking the bike off the roof of a car but it takes you know it's, it's one push of a lever by the time by the time i stopped got off the bike took my wahoo off and put the bike down the bike's going to be there ready for me to jump on so Personally, I would rather just ride the climb and change the bike on the climb. How much I mean, time do you think you lose? Like, if if you didn't change the bike, do you, do you could you you saw Dumoulin? I think he just went completely straight up the climb in the Tour de France. It's 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 a hard one because obviously I've set the bike up for the flat. If you set the bike up for both, then you. I don't want. I, I don't want to take the bike. The bike's two point three kilo more than the uh, than the road bike. Oh, so yeah, and then also also. It, you got the 2.3 kilos on the climb, but then you've got the gearing aspect as well. And then I've took the front mech off as well, so I stayed a bit with that. So it might be, you know, on the on the first section of the of the race, the bike might be three or four watts more aero, the way that it is now, which that's going to be, that could be 10, 15 seconds, 10, 12 seconds. So what? that's actually, by making the bike more aero, that, that's kind of builds you in a buffer to change the bike for the climb. And then obviously saving 2.3 kilos on that climb is going to be like over, over, um, over 15, maybe 20 watts, something like that. 15, 15 watts, something like that. Yeah, when I'm already knackered, saving 15 watts is probably going to be uh, in my favor by taking a, a lighter bike. So looking at the rest of the week, is there any other stages that kind of catch your attention you were kind of in the mix in one of the sprint stages as you said you finished 16th yeah no i haven't really looked um, i haven't looked past the tt yet i mean the way things were the last two days um i've been thinking that i'll be doing the tt and then i'll start the next day and then i probably won't be finishing the way that my muscles been on my leg because it's just been so painful and um but hopefully with all the rest and the correction stuff now that i've had i'm going to try changing my cleats i wasn't getting anywhere near any pain when I was on my TT bike today. And I know that my cleats are set a bit differently on my TT shoes. Um, like even 10 millimeters, it's quite a lot. So I'm gonna try changing my cleat position on my road shoes and hope for the best. Um, trying and just try and survive the rest of it. I wanna have, want have a dabble in some of the sprint stages. I know there's one or two flat stages that are left. Obviously Madrid and I think one midweek stage. Um, I mean, the legs are fine. It's just the muscle. And if the muscle's cooked and sore, then it does make riding pretty difficult. That's all. I'll just find you the stage as well. Well, stage 16 looks pretty flat. Oh, good. Um, that, yeah, well, it's, well, actually, no, it's quite rolling. <laughs> that's a complete lie. Well, yeah, it'll be, if it's 2,000 meters of climb, over 180k, then that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it, every day is 2,000 meters. So. It doesn't matter. So overall, we spoke about in the last interview that um, you only came to the Welter like as a you were meant to go to Paris Roubaix, and you asked yeah. like 
kind of if you wanted to go and uh, how's your experience been overall so far in the world to España? Um, yeah, it's been good. Um, I've enjoyed it. Didn't think I'd get this far into it, to be honest. Yeah, I guess I discovered quite a lot about myself and what I can do and also like where you need to be at to come to a race like this, which I would nowhere near where I need to be. But I'm saying I didn't know I was doing the race, so <laughs> um, yeah. But it's been, yeah, I wouldn't change it. It's been a good experience so far. So, um, yeah, hopefully you can still survive out another week, <laughs> provided my muscle uh, sorts itself out a little bit. <laughs> well, we'll hope for that and uh, we'll look out for you tomorrow in the time trial and uh, really hope that you do a good result and uh, potentially take some of the time checks, the time checks on the flat. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, I'll give it a crack. But yeah, all the best for the uh, rest of the world to España and um, yeah, hopefully see you in Madrid. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I get that.